All right, looks like we're uh, running down the uh, now loading clock here. Get all our cameras working. Get my hat on straight. Howdy folks, don't know if anybody's watching. Figured I'd try this thing again. Earlier in the day, it's like uh, 12.30 on a Sunday for me. Buy our other cameras. There's the workbench, hello. Here's the thing I'm gonna try building today. See how far I get. This is, well, I keep wondering if I should flip this camera so you can see more like right side up what I'm viewing. Um, now might be the wrong time to try that. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi Pico based terminal module for the RC2014 computer that I've been building. Um, that computer is this, which is pretty cool. I, um, I took all the individual modules out of these like 3D printed cases I had them in because I think it uh, they weren't quite working and uh, it hides the like nice colorful boards. Uh, this is the board that I just built. Trying to figure out how to move this on camera. This digital I.O. board is what I built last stream. Works pretty good. Maybe I should give a little demo of it later. Um, doo -doo -doo. Also playing around with a new uh, demo scene playlist on YouTube, so we'll see how that works. I noticed one of the videos just said it was age-restricted, which is a little weird. Uh, might have to take that one out of the place. All right, so what else do I want to test? I want to test this view. Okay, so this is what I would like to end up building. It looks like a crap ton of resistors. Um, and this uh, Pico Pi castellated part that's soldered in. Cautiously optimistic that I could maybe get it done in an hour or two. Whether that means one stream or not, I don't know. So I guess we'll see. Uh, soldering iron is warmed up. So I guess I can jump right into it. And the first thing I really want to do is sort out all the resistors. Because that'll probably be one of the simplest things to solder in. I mean, there's buttons and stuff too, but those are those are also easy. But the resistors, oh yeah, then there's this dial. But the resistors ought to work out what all the values are. Um, wondering, I don't think that, let's see, Pico Pi, Pico, Pi Pico VGA terminal on the set die assemble mining board, yada, yada, yada. Um, orange jumpers and header pins are not available, so you'll need to use yellow. I think I'll probably end up using green because I already used my yellow on another board. Um, Black, brown, tactile switches are used too. No, if you're still using Wi-Fi module or FTD, da, 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 then the right jumper must be used. Okay, okay. Um, Pi Pico soldering tips. Open that. Pico VJ terminal. Oops, I went into uh, scrolling mode and not uh, open in new tab mode. I think I already had this tab, this open in a tab. Oh, no, I don't. This is more documentation. Let's see what this says. Mm, it's a simple terminal for RC2014. I'm going to open this in a new tab. A lot of the instructions for these modules are like semi-self-explanatory. Just look at the, the silk screen on the board and it tells you what parts to put in, which is pretty nice. There's been a quirk or two that I found, but like... Nothing that's too bad if you're careful and you look at what's going on. Um, yeah, I don't need to know much about this yet, I don't think, as long as I put it together correctly. Um, five precision resistors for each of the red, blue, green channels. Oh, that's why there's so many resistors. There's um, 15 resistors for each color, or five for each color, which makes 15. Resistor ladder DACs, my beloved, yeah. I kind of figured that's what that was. I haven't built one of those before, but just looking at it, I figured that's what it was. 
which is cool. Um, go to three buttons connected to yada yada yada. Okay, yeah, I don't think I need to know these details right now for assembly. Those details will be useful for usage later. Um, this is the schematic, which shows resistor values very illegibly, <laughs> but that's okay. Just kind of trying to get my ducks in a row before I get started on it. Um, I think oh, I've got that open twice. That's cool. Uh, what else? Yeah, so this is the big picture of it. I'm gonna trust this picture since it also basically appears to match what it says on the actual circuit board I have, which is upside down, but you can't even read these, but you can kind of see. So yeah, resistor ladder uh, back. This will be fun. And that's my microscope, which is not plugged in. Okay, so I guess the first thing is to try to locate all these resistors. Because I have uh, like a big you know parts, which is uh, not very well organized. Say, Levy. Um, it's probably why I may have lost some parts at some point. I should probably like ready my meter too, just to be sure I know what these parts are. I have also learned in greater uh, detail about resistor um, tolerances. They're not always a precise, accurate value, depending on the last color band. All right, so we got a couple, we need a couple 1K resistors. Looks like I got some 1K resistors here. We're gonna need some, I mean, these are pretty precise values here. They're, I think they're less precise on the silk screen for the board. Yeah, they're not quite as precise on here as they are on the, uh, the like rendered picture. Get that open in a new tab, actually. I think I already have this open in a new tab, don't I? Too many tabs. Got the schematic open in like a billion tabs. Yeah, this is the same picture as this. Um, and that's the assembled view. And that's a different page. All right, well, let's close some of these tabs. Just kind of trying to get, oh yeah, this is another module I want to build. Maybe not today. Um, okay, finished product, silk screen. Maybe I'll uh, zoom in on that a little bit more. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Still trying to work out exactly, eh, bugger, how to place things on my workbench so as to get to them effectively. All right. I mean, I don't necessarily need this picture because it's literally what I'm looking at in front of me. So that's the like pride dye sublimated colored version. This is the original flat. Well, this is the, the rendered version. Um, most of these boards look like this tile, this teal version. Okay. Start looking for more diet, more uh, resistors. <coughs> Looks like we need at least one 2K. This is probably gonna use up all the rest of the resistors I have in the uh, kit, really. So, I don't know, maybe just get them all out. Uh, and I think the blue color of these resistors means they are high precision. This is a thing I'm still learning about. There's a chunky diode in here. 
Like there are things I know vaguely because I've heard of them before and there are things I don't super, super know because I've never had to actually like build a thing with them. Let's see, 3.9. Hopefully I haven't used up all the high precision ones on other boards by mistake. All right, so we need 22K. I guess what would help here too is if I still have open, I do still have open my resistor bands reference sheet. Like I can look at things like, okay, so I need a 22K resistor in the first spot. It looks like, yeah, 22K resistor. That's going to be red, red, orange. Do I have a red, red, orange? I do have a red, red, orange. This looks like... Come on, focus. Red, red, orange. Cool. Tolerance will be dictated... Tolerance will be dictated by the last ring. Generally, the blue ones differ from the tan ones in the number of rings. Okay. Yeah, like that's another thing I... I should know by now, but seem to keep forgetting. Come on, focus. There we go. Red, red, orange, gold. So this should be my 22K. I'll throw it on my meter just to be sure, because this is a... Uh, I am baby. Uh, upside down meter. <laughs> I really should flip that camera upside down. Is that any better? Yeah, it's, a, it's roughly 22K. Give or take, given the gold. Uh... And I'm wondering, do I have, I have one around here that's like that. Yeah, I am kind of wondering if I used different parts on different boards that weren't meant for different boards, but... Because it's curious that in the, um, you know, bungling along with... Oh, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. These two are not blue. That was what I was wondering, is if maybe I used a 22K blue resistor for a different board. Um, it says, if the resistors are a bit off spec in a resistor ladder DAC, you'll get a little less accurate colors in the VGA output, but it should work fine. Okay. That is good to know. Thank you. Also seems like a thing I should know, but uh, it's very good to hear. All right, so just kind of bending the legs on this. Start dropping the parts in. So that's our first resistor, is a 22K ohm. I swear I'm gonna get used to bending these legs perfectly by the time I'm absolutely done with the entire thing. And then probably all my projects after this will be surface mount. All right, so that's uh, the first of a billion resistors. Hopefully I get faster at this as I go and don't to labor every single frickin' resistor. So there's that one. Now I'm looking for 10K. Ten 10K. That's gonna be... 10K is brown, black, orange. Brown, black, orange. I've got a bunch of resistors here that I labeled as 9.8K with my meter. And they do indeed have brown, black, orange striping. Come on, focus, Mr. Android. Yeah, brown, black, orange. I'm guessing those are good enough for uh, 10K. Yeah, that's where I got confused, because like the last band um, specifies the tolerance. That's what I was looking for, not threshold tolerance. It's like, give or take 5% of 10K. Simple baby stuff.
Am I the type of person to care about putting every resistor next to each other the same way around? <laughs> uh, both. I, 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 I want to line up all the uh, tolerance bands. We all need to go the right way around. I was actually doing that on the last stream when I was putting a bunch of resistors in. And then I was annoyed because then they didn't like all sit flush because I kind of botched it on the bat and I flipped the board over. But it works. There you go, get in there, Mr. Resistor. Next to your friend, Miss Resistor. I don't know what. Shouldn't use pronouns for mechanical parts or electronic parts. Alright, so that's our 10k. Um, next one up. Oh, 
Yeah, I've been babbling with it on mute because I coughed a minute earlier. Thanks for, uh, thanks for that. I'm just rambling about this demo. This demo is pretty cool. It's like the LED sign that's been, that's from outside a European uh, pharmacy. And more uh, making fun of myself for belaboring resistors. I've never seen one of those in person. It's almost like they didn't need to make a demo for it, because this is just what they look like normally. From what I've seen on YouTube. I should probably like implement an alert in my stream and OBS to like tell me when I've been muted for longer than 15 seconds. I think there should be demos on weirder things like microwave front panels and ovens. <laughs> Micro teams as you are muted reminders every time you sneeze. Yeah. Looking for now. I've got. Um... I got more resistors to place. I'm getting there. I got one case, I got two case. I'm looking for a uh, 3K9. Yeah, I got three of those. I got 3K9s on the silk screen. These are 4.02 Ks on there. I think I got three of them, and I have three left. So that's good. And just because I'm being particular about it, I'm going to meter it real quick. Indeed, they're 3.9. There's also some pretty heavy road construction outside my shop here. Hopefully that's not coming through too bad. If at all. I got pretty heavy noise gate and compression and stuff on this mic. I also turned the background music up a bit louder and stuck an annoying duck on it for my voice. Hopefully it's, it all evens out. I'm talking a lot right now, but I'm hoping on streams where I don't feel like talking that the demo music is amusing enough. Pulling the right resistors, aren't I? Yeah. Mm 
I need a few more resistors to go. Some of these are annoyingly not even. I want to keep myself from screwing with them too much because I know if I keep bending the legs, I'll just snap right off. All right, we got, what is that? 8K2. Wow. 8.06. 8K2. I got a few here labeled as 8K. Because at one point I went through and I metered all of these. And that's going to be colors I can't really decipher. And yeah, the blue makes it really hard to decipher these colors, at least in my eyes. 8K2 looks like gray, red, red. Come on, focus, you bugger. Uh, sure. It looks like black, black, red to me. It goes back to the meter. Eight point two one. Close enough. We're gonna call these eight K two. There is a point in assembling something like this where I want it to look very pretty and, and neat and precise, and then at some point I say, screw it, I want it assembled and working because I want to play with the toy. It's a lot of resistors. hearing Mario sounds come from a Commodore 64. Oh, these do look a little janky. No, well. It's art artisanal. And handcrafted from Portland, Oregon. That one's too janky to let pass. Okay, K2. I guess we're down to needing four more 1K resistors. But I don't see on hand. I'm gonna look harder. I have another stash in the parts box here. Definitely 1Ks, right? Alright, well, I'm gonna look at my parts bin real quick, I think. Because these are all the blue resistors from the kit. Hmm, my parts bin is off camera, so you'll just get to maybe wander around the shop again. Where did I leave resistors? Uh, up, 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 up. Here's my resistors. Okay. Well, I don't know why I'm short a few resistors, but 
I'm very sure it's something I did while I was moving stuff around in the shop. We have one Meg. That is not it. These are more blue resistors, which I'm surprising. Surprised how badly I can tell the colors apart. At least the uh, strips are labeled. 47 R4 R7, 10K. And of course, they're in no order. Is why would they be in any order? Okay. Then Meg 6, 5R6. I mean, I guess maybe they're in an order. Mutter, mutter, mutter. Looking for 1K resistors. Meg 20K, 680K, 33 ohm. One meg, six R eight, two K, ten K for some reason just floating around in there. I'll look again. Um, the bands for one K, if by some miracle I can see them, are brown, black, red. Six K. I love zero ohm resistors. They're just wires. Oops. I don't think I'll use those. Fifty six hundred K. The one Ks are going to be at the very bottom, aren't they? 6R Meg 2 Maybe I should just start from the bottom and uh, skip the discovery Oh Huh I did not find 1k resistors in here at all They gotta be in here Unless I have another drawer of resistors somewhere. Which is possible. These don't look like what I want at all. These are, uh... Totally visually different. No 1K in there. Do I have another drawer with the with resistors? Like, did I have a part two resistors in here? Hmm. Oh. These are little headers, chip sockets. I don't need those. I also need to reorganize things in here and label things. Hmm. We've got LEDs and some things over here. It's none of those. Well, that's disappointing. things floating around in here. They're not blue resistors. Of 
Brown, black, red, brown, black, red. I need four. I found two that are not of the brown or not of the blue variety. Makes me think maybe I used those blue 1Ks on another board. Which is fully possible. I found two, I need four. No, that's 10k. I want 1k, not 10k. Yeah, that's a 10k. That'd be way off. That's a 1k. Brown, black, red, I can see the stripes on the brown style resistor. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick these in and continue looking for the other two. Kind of annoying that they're not the nice blue ones, at least for color's sake, but I think for function's sake, they'll be fine. Falling apart. Yeah. Oops, fell on the floor. Oh boy. That's where parts go to die. part of this circuit is just kind of messily analog, but it'll be my own unique color combination. Let's see, brown, black, red, is this the right color? The right thing? Yeah, okay, find another 1K. I don't know why I just have these like floating loose in this box. One more 1K and then I have all my resistors. Brown, black, red. I guess there's a difference between brown, black, red and brown, black, orange. Although the orange and red look fairly similar to my eyes. Maybe I'm just old.
That's another 10K. We don't want a 10K. Now these 10Ks suspect to me. So I guess is why I'm subjecting them all to the meter. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I see a brown, black, red. Will you be my last needed 1K resistor? You are my last needed 1K resistor. Nice. So let's get you on the board. Okay, I think that's all the resistors. Guess I could place the switches, but then I can solder those along the way too. Those are nice because if I get them just right, they tend to hook themselves in. I don't have to worry about it. <sighs> Key point being if I get it right. I've been streaming for almost an hour. I've gotten maybe a quarter of this board done. I think I'll keep going though. I would really like to finish this whole board on one stream. Hopefully it's not four hours worth of streaming. Those are in. There's another switch needed. goes there, which is a little off kilter. Seven microfarad, which I believe I've got here. I'll leave with the board looking good. Good luck with it. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks for stopping by. Have a good day. Nice to see you. Let's see. Just to be sure, which way does the stripey stripe go on this? Yeah, stripey stripe goes that way. So we'll get you in there. There's also a diode. Chunky boy diode. Hard to tell from this picture, but I think the stripe goes away from the VGA can Trying to be careful about that. Yeah, stripe goes away from the VGA kind of. Oops, did I just? Nope. Yeah, because there's the uh, this version of the building, and then there's this the original flavor. All right, stripe goes away. Hmm. 
not being sure what kind of diode this is too. I actually showed that on stream, but this is the other thing that I'm looking at. It's like, doop, 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 doop. That's the board in the original flavor. I don't think I actually had this scene shared when I was flipping between these two. Yeah, so that goes away. I'm gonna put that in. The more components I can get placed right now, the more I can focus on soldering. Come on, mister. Get in there. Pretty close tolerances on the, the holes on this PCB. I'm gonna get the legs bent just so. There we go. I think we're in there pretty all right. What next? Got some headers to put in there. Headers are annoying to put in when they're upside down. Maybe I'll put those in next-ish. This is a pretty good selection of components to start us off. Let's, let's flip it over. Kind of a rat's nest back here, but that's all right. Clippers out. I'm all done with resistors. Just draw it away real quick. Get our solder accessible. And away we go. I saw this little um, widget on printables.com last week to uh, zip tie a solder dispenser to the soldering iron. I'm curious to try it. A little 3D printed widget so you can kind of like do this with your finger to like feed solder in. wonder how effective it might be.
I'm also trying to make sure I got decent solder joints here without overcooking the board. Brings out the, um, the dye that makes the board pretty. It's susceptible to fading if you cook it too much. And I have not been meticulously careful about that. So far, so good. No, so we got other switches. Okay. Terrible, not great. Is any HDMI interface being developed for the RC 24K? I don't know. I want to say I saw. Not, this is like a text terminal. I want to say there's a graphics card using the graphics chip from a, a ZX Spectrum. I think there might be a version of that that has an HDMI, HDMI output. All right, time to trim some of these off. But yeah, this is just a basic text terminal, I'm pretty sure, like ANSI text. And I guess uh, EGA is simple analog retro fun. You can Get it working with just a bunch of resistors. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the name of the chip. It's like TMS something or other. I just okay. I'm not just broadcasting fingers. But yeah, I've also ordered a sound card for this thing. The uh. YM emulator. So that'll be a future stream. Maybe. Now I'm just broadcasting fingers if I do it that way. Yeah, this demo went forever. Get to the next one. I think I'm not getting some of these leads. Yeah, I didn't manage to trim some of these. This side's a little awkward to get to for me.
Alright. That's looking tight here. Also trying to reserve some of these resistor legs because I read a tip for soldering the Raspberry Pi Pico in is to stick a few legs through the castellated parts to kind of align the microcontroller. We'll see how well that works. Oops, got a little bit of a solder ball there. Hopefully that's all right. All right. That looks fairly tidy. Let's flip her back over and think about the next part. So we got, um... Headers to solder in. We got the VGA socket to solder in. Curious about these pins. Yeah. Looks like they're not populated on this board, so these are just open. I guess that's like maybe some GPIO to play with for fun. Maybe we can try the um, GA port next. So I got, um, this is where the Raspberry Pi Pico is going to go. We got a VGA interface, we got some headers, and then we got the backplane interface right there. TSEMU has HDMI output, $75 graphics card for the RC20. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. The, the TMS 9918A module. That's kind of spendy for a module, but it could be fun to play with. Let's see if I can get all these pins aligned. Yeah, like this board I think runs, I don't know, 30 bucks? This particular Pi board? But it is only text. I don't want to force this part in and bend any pins. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like I, I managed. Doesn't look like any pins are bent. All right. Well, maybe I should just solder that in immediately. Take advantage of not dropping it. Um, Move my uh, helping hands a little bit here. Yeah, if I got that in and none of the pins are bent, I should just immediately do that. Yeah, it looks like these... Um, these bits will need a bit of solder, but they're kind of like physical anchoring. All right, let's get to it. But yeah, I could imagine at some point I will probably buy that graphics card. If I keep using this thing and this thing is still fun, I'm probably not going to just like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking I'm probably not going to fill this entire thing with solder and then I do. Alright. So hopefully that gives us a nice solid physical anchor into the PCB. That's probably grounding. Shift it a little bit more towards the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Go. Now each of the individual pins. Yeah, 
and will be delighted if this works the first. Probably should be using a finer soldering tip too. Inspection. 30. We need to clean that up with a little toothbrush, but uh, I think that's all soldered in. So far, so good. What do we got left? We got um, headers here. Yellow ones are used in the official picture. I'm pretty sure I used all the yellow headers from my kit somewhere else. So I am using green. I'm gonna do something stupid here, which is I'm gonna clamp some solder with my helping hands. So I can, with my hands, and I uh, hold the headers in, and then uh, hopefully tack these in. My thumbnail's pretty temperature resistant, I guess. Oop. Trying to see if you can see this on the stream as things are moving around on my workbench. Yeah, that's way off to the side, isn't it? Can't even see what I'm holding in. I should probably just do it whether you can see it or not. Just kind of want to physically tack those in, and then I can uh, flip the board upside down and better attach it. done this for all kinds of headers and it's very dumb. It's got to be a better way to do that. But they're in now. Then I can do this and give them a better soldering treatment. solder is not wanting to go on those pins. Alright. I think that's soldered. Yeah, good enough. Probably horribly misaligned on the other side. Nah, that's not terrible. Okay, those are in. Um, I guess what I can do now is bite the bullet and 
go for the Pico soldering. Figure out how to best position my little uh, hands for this. There we go. Got it pretty straight in there. And this part comes in a little uh, pick and place strip. We'll liberate it from that. Now the tip I saw, so we can kind of get that there, roughly aligned. But as you can see, I'm bumping it all, all over the place. But then, I saved some resistor pins, which I believe I can do this with. There we go. Hopefully that can act as kind of an alignment jig. Because this thing has no pins. It only has castellations. And the holes line up at the board. So hopefully we can kind of use this to, to pin it in. And then, um, I don't know, when I'm done, I clip these off. I'm not going to do it for every hold. I'm just going to kind of try to use these to clamp it down in good enough alignment. It's not exactly surface mount soldering. Oops, that one just fell right through. It is wiggling still a little bit. I'm hoping once I start to tack it down, we can get it fairly stabilized. Okay. Not awful. Oop, a little too shiny. That's pretty good alignment, I think. Let's uh, let's commence with some solder. It's not the best solder joints, but we can maybe go over them later. This is also a nightmare to desolder. If I ever wanted to do that, which I don't ever want to do that. I do kind of wish these parts had like a. I mean, I guess you can put socket headers on these. I kind of wish this was socketed. I guess I could have made it socketed. I don't know. Uh-oh. Hoping I'm not bridging anything.
Because I guess if I get this part bad, I just throw the whole board out and order a new one. And then, uh... Better luck next time. support out. I don't really want to solder that in, I don't think. streaming for about an hour and a half. I think this is pretty good progress. solder keeps falling off the spool and getting wrapped around the axle of the uh, dispenser. I can fix that. Alright, so far so good. I'm gonna have to jinx it. are looking not terrible. This little um, knock on wood, this little support tip, or little alignment tip, I think, has worked for me. <sighs> Cross fingers knock on wood, that everything I'm doing here is a workout in the end. Earlier, I soldered a castellated ESP8266 to a a Wi-Fi board. Something I did there screwed up because I had to desolder that and try again. That is not happening with this board. The desoldering, I mean. I could totally screw it up. If I were really thinking and have this board done on the stream, I would have brought a uh, something capable VGA video capture out here with me, but I did not.
I didn't even bring a VGA cable out. Support out. Okay, that I think is the Pi Pico soldered in. I was worried about that. Let's give it a little uh, inspection. See anything bridged? Nothing obviously bridged. At least on top. I mean, I guess it could bridge underneath, and then I'm just rude, and I don't know. But underneath, see, this is one of the things I was trying to do is to make sure some of the solder went through and kind of filled the holes. Those are kind of like your de facto pins. It's an uneven job, but I think it's probably good enough. Probably pretty good here. Okay. And it's definitely in there. It's not, it's not uh, separating from this board anytime soon. You know what I should have done before I put in the, uh, the VGA port, is I should have gotten the headers in there first. Oh well. I think we'll be okay. So now, I'm looking for dual row headers. Yeah, we got some of those left. Now this is the fun part, because like, okay, so we get these dual row right angle headers. But as you might be able to see, they don't cover the entire bottom of the board. So what we have to do is see how they fit. Man, all the hands on my helping hands are falling out. Probably need to hot glue them back in because that's uh, what kind of helping hands these are. Yeah, so what I need to do is basically kind of test fit this. And what I'm going to need to do is pull out all these pins and all these pins so I had some needle nose pliers around here I can't find them out here they are. okay so this side's easy we start from the three down and what I'm actually gonna do is just physically pull this out. And try not to like mix my red hair with things. There we go. And pull these pins out. And now, hopefully, this side matches up. Now, I'm 
figure out where to start that on the other side. I believe I got this right. I'm gonna start with this pin. Yeah, so it's gonna match like that. And now I just gotta pull the rest of these out. Make sure I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, I gotta go this way. I almost wish these boards were made such that they just accepted the, the, all the pins of the header, even though they're not electrically connected, but. This also makes it harder to um, put the card in backwards, so I see the benefit. Guess you can't see me doing that on the close-up cam. Just pulling out these pins. They give pretty easily. Help that my uh, players are slightly magnetized. That's that for those. Now, I should find that. The pin headers fit. You can see I pulled out pins so that the upper row only mesh with the holes there. And yeah, we got an extra pin on this side. This side, yeah, but that's okay. I gotta start soldering them in. I'm gonna do the stupid trick again where I stick solder in my helping hands. You can't see any of that. Yeah, I gotta apply some hot glue to this stupid thing. It's a really cheap set of helping hands. It's funny because I think it reuses like hoses for like cooling a CNC machine. Definitely not doing this where you can see it though. But what I'm doing is I'm just kind of trying to physically tack a few of the pins in. So then... Yeah, there we go. I think I just had kind of a network burp. Am I going to get my cameras back? I did. Cool, okay. This happened last time. My whole network kind of went up and down. My microphone's on Wi-Fi, so is this camera. Kind of glad I caught it this time, because last time it happened, 
I went for like another half hour not realizing my mic was completely gone. Not that I'm seeing anything particularly thrilling, but... Okay, now I gotta solder in these socket pins. Close to two hours streaming, which is um, pretty okay. So I'm actually fairly close to being done. Sounds like a weird version of uh, the Zoids theme song on Commodore 64. By Rob Hubbard. I think it's Rob Hubbard. weird noise arpeggio. the sound of tapes loading in the morning. Something that RC14 doesn't have, as far as I know, is a tape drive interface. It's not that kind of retro. for soldering these pins is not consistent. Oh no. Helping hand let go. place the iron against the side of these pins to heat them up quick enough to solder but not so quick that I scorch the board. That's my intent but 
I don't know if the result is uh, perfect. Man, man, friend. Hello, Mr. Skipper J. Welcome to Lurking. Hopefully, this is the tail end of the stream. As I've uh, done most of the hard work. After these pins. I'm a little bothered by this pin right here. This one's a little bent off center. I don't really matter that much. It'll get brought into line when I plug it into the board. All right, let's give it a quick inspection because I think... Ooh, those aren't terrible solder joints. Not, uh, focus. Not awful. Great. Nothing looks bridged. All right. Well, so here's what I've been building. And I think it might be done. Ah, uh, we got our little uh, Raspberry Pi Pico castellated soldered in there, hopefully for great justice. We got our um, card bus pins, we got a couple switches, we got our um, Zelda analog ladder of resistors there. Oopie doopie doop. We got some headers to connect, or some jumpers. Slot those in. So yeah, so I guess um, for comparison, if I can get it straight on the camera, this is what we're building. Pretty close. I used the, uh, the green jumpers instead of the yellow jumpers because that's what I had left. Looks like um, these pins aren't populated. I'm guessing those are like extra little GPIOs that stick out. We got our VGA interface soldered in. We got our resistors that are a little uh, frustratingly not all blue. Oops, that's the wrong button. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think we've uh, we've missed any parts. Can use a cleaning, but um, yeah, we might be done. I don't think this monitor. I don't think this monitor has VGA. Just frustrating. Um, so I may end the stream and go in the house and try this. It slots into the computer roughly, hmm, roughly, like so. It's the VGA plug is bumping up against the next module, so let's uh, bump that back a slot. You got a pin one, yeah. 
All right, so there's the computer. And then uh, here's the board I just built. So far I've got um, compact flash card interface, a RAM ROM board, clock board, CPU board, a Wi-Fi uh, serial board, basically like a modem, a serial interface card, which this talks to, um, now our VGA interface. And this is just kind of a digital I.O. board. It's got colored LEDs and uh, some buttons. So that's our computer so far. We still got like four slots free. I've got two more cards in the kit to build, but I think I'm going to put that off for a while. No, I've got three more cards to build. I think I'm going to save. There's a, there's a real-time clock board that tells the computer what time it is. I think I'm going to save that for next stream. I've got a RAM board and a ROM board, but this board think replaces those because I ordered the the kit and then I ordered um does it look better on this camera yeah I don't know I got this kit and then I ordered some supplementary boards so some of the boards I ordered replace a couple that came with the kit proper um, so yeah that might be in good shape so I think I'm wrapping up Next time, I'm thinking I'm going to build this board, which is the um, real-time clock. I'm tempted to build it now, because there's not very many parts on it. What time is it? Almost half after, half after two, I've been stringing for two hours. This is mostly soldering. Very tempted to start this board, actually. It'd be kind of a jackpot if I got two boards built out of this stream. Let me look at it real quick. This is the board I'm building. There's a couple capacitors. There's like uh, five capacitors. There's a clock. There's a battery. There's some ICs. I'm very tempted to just start in on this one before I end the stream. Let me check real quick. What kind of capacitors are these? Bill of materials. We have five one microfarad capacitors. Question is, do I have them on hand? may not have them on hand. Oh, hey, there's one of my lost diodes. I was missing that the other night. Like, I don't think I threw out parts from this kit, but I may well have misplaced them. The one annoying thing about these sockets is they're not going to stay in when I flip the board upside down. So I'm going to have to kind of like sandwich it with my hand and try to get some of these things um, tacked in. Yeah, this is what we want right here. We want this thing to tell the computer what time it is when it boots up. Hmm. I could commence to soldering and find the part. If I could, hmm. I still haven't found an awesome way to like get these socket headers like tacked in. I used like painter's tape once. That worked middlingly well. Really, I just need to hold them. I need to hold all this crap in long enough to flip it over and then tack. Some, enough pins in to where everything will stay. Can I get it done in about a half hour? Because that's about how long I'm going to stay out here.
But this board is way simpler than the other one. I mean, I guess I could also do it one part at a time. It's just, it looks so complete right now with everything just sticking in there. I want you tacked in there. This is also not the best camera view. For this. It's alright. Soldering in Pomodoro intervals? Yeah. Ooh. I'm about to lose that clock module. I'm just kind of doing a terrible job of soldering right now. So that things will physically stay in. And then I'll, I can hang the board upside down and do the real job. It's a little toasty. But I didn't get where, I've, where I am today without being, uh, without a little second and third degree burns. Myself, but you know, there's different kinds of pain. There's there's boredom and frustration of not getting a thing done, and there are burns. Sometimes you play through the pain because you're an idiot who doesn't know how to do it better. Okay. It's not too bad. Yeah, those are all pretty well tacked in there.
These shenanigans are nearly complete. This resistor package in, we might be ready to stop doing extremely stupid things. Oh, that was not the resistor package I was soldering. That's fun. Background music is making me want to load up the System Shock remake soundtrack. I have not heard that before. I should look that up. I haven't played the System Shock remake. And I should. Oh, come on, little resistor friend. Make some solder. We need capacitors. We need the headers. I need to find the capacitors. Because I don't find them with my kit. Luckily, this particular module just takes a um, single row header rather than a double row header. So I can uh, perform a few more shenanigans. The shenanigans being um, an attacking. Well, focus, focus, focus. I'm gonna attack this thing in so that I can commence to better soldering. Can you see this chicanery right here? Yeah, you can maybe see me burn myself. I just kind of want to tack that in. And then tack that in. And it's still, it's pretty straight. I had thought about like 3D printing a jig to help uh, Align these pins, but they're pretty well aligned. All right, I'm going to tack in a couple middle pin. There we go. They abruptly onto the next demo. Okay. So very minimal soldering work, just to kind of get these things all like physically stand on the board when I totally flip it upside down. And um, looks like mission accomplished. No parts are flying. We are missing a bunch of capacitors. I might have to go in my parts drawer to find them. Okay, well, I'm at a bit over two hours of streaming. Let's just keep going. Maybe I can get two boards done today.
It's the video game that lets you pretend you're E.T., running away from secret agents, falling into danger, finding a phone to call home, and discovering the best thing on Earth. A friend. E.T. Only from Atari. price ever at Radio Shack on the most powerful transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 when you sign up with Radio Shack's authorized cellular phone carrier. Go where you want to go. There's nothing else to buy and it's ready to go wherever you go. Call when you want to call. Use in your car or go portable and take it along. Radio Shack's complete transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 only at Radio Shack, the technology store. to say her name. Me, Noodle. Play games. Peek, Fab. Boo. And love you back. Uh oh Achoo. <laughs> Your furry sneezed. Achoo. And gave mine a cold. Furby loves you love and talk. Me love you. Furby, the Giga Pet you really Show and tell time. <laughs> Another teddy bear. My teddy's name is Teddy Ruxpin. He talks, he tells stories. Four batteries not included. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? Yeah. I really enjoy talking to people. I would like... Teddy Ruxpin, the storytelling bear, comes with illustrated book and cassette from Worlds of Wonder. than ever from Worlds of Wonder. Remember how determined your parents were to give you the gift of knowledge, no matter how many gifts it took? Today, you have a big advantage with the Apple II GS. Apple II computers are found in more schools than any other computer. Your parents gave you the world. You can give your kids the universe. The Commodore VIC-20. Welcome to the age of the computer. As you grow with Vic, Vic grows with you. The VIC-20, only $3.59. Includes bonus pack and data... Alright, I think we're back. Avenue, your official Commodore yeah. Computer dealer. Commodore VIC-20, the one to grow on. Just kind of got a visit from my wife as she's off for a walk. Everything's still working. All right. Let's see. Okay. Hopefully I can finish this board real quick. Make sure the demos are all working. Make sure the demos are working and land on one that's fun. Yeah. 
Let's get the solder in. It's fun to watch some of these demos as they go through like the load up screens and whatnot before the music kicks in. Twenty minutes, yeah. <laughs> I will have been streaming for three hours. I intended to stream for one hour. But on the bright side, I got more toys to play with for my uh, retro, not vintage computer. plastic melting, so I'm hoping I'm not scorching these sockets on the other side too badly. kind of a balance between getting good solder joints, not melting the plastic, and also not scorching the circuit board too much because it's got a nice dye sublimated coloration that cooks away at solder temperatures. I haven't been super careful with it. I also started this whole kit last summer, so I'm kind of excited to like get back to it and actually like finish it. Is that Mr. Bean? This playlist of demos, but I haven't watched all of them all the way through. <laughs> Stream has been making me interested in through hole soldering. You've only done SMD. Ah, yeah, I have been the opposite. I did a bunch of like little through hole kits and also I was working on repairing some um, 80s arcade game PCBs which I'll probably be doing some more of and that's all mostly through hole I just started doing some surface mount like this past summer I want to learn more of it you get a microscope through hole it's pretty nice and satisfying, though. Good. 
but yeah, all the like 80s arcade game PCBs are all through hole. Pretty easy for a human with uh, with meaty hands to deal with. I also want to build another mech keyboard. I uh, a mechanical keyboard. I built a actually I built I built this right here with the cable will reach. I built this a few. Oh, that's way. That's really close. Um, I built this a few years ago. Um, it's awful. It's all hand soldered diodes and crap, and then like hand soldered wires to a TNC. But yeah, very tiny board. I had the wild idea to make it a one-handed keyboard. That's why the, the legends are all crazy. And I got these modifier keys here. And so each key is subdivided into four keys. Um, at least it was. <laughs> Turns out that is not helpful to type on. So right now it's flashed with firmware to just control the stream. And at some point I want to print new legends for it. But um, yeah, so I might play with that firmware again someday. But yeah, right now it's just straight up buttons and it controls the scenes in OBS. Kind of a, a cheapo stream deck. But yeah, that was all hand soldered. I would not really want to do that again. If I did it again, I'd, I'd do a PCB for it. But I also haven't learned um, circuit board design yet, so. But yeah, I think I got up to um, eight words a minute. <laughs> with maybe, I think about eight words a minute typing with that weird um, multi-layered key layout. Also doesn't help, it's like fully alien, like it is not a courting keyboard like court stenographers would use or anything like that. It's like fully I invented it, so totally amateur hour. I would have to learn it entirely by myself. Eight words per minute is how fast your brain works before coffee. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Same. All right. Ooh, we've soldered quite a lot of a lot of this. I gotta go through all these pins at the bottom. Which that's not too bad. My helping hands don't fall apart, which they are very close to falling apart. Really what I need for this, I think, is a, is a PCB vise. good enough. This is really kind of a neat uh, design for a little uh, kit computer. Oh, it's this demo again. Demo and a pharmacy sign. Let me do that pin. Armageddon. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Oh, I think that's like 90% of this board soldered. Let's see. Um, with a little battery holder soldered in. Focus on this is atrocious. Um, not too bad, not too bad. Anything bridged? I don't think so. Not too bad. Some of the shiny is just from the flux. Oh, the parts have fallen out. But, um, and also put together. And just to kind of like compare, this is what I'm building. The chips haven't been populated yet. Uh, missing the capacitors. So now I need to go look behind me and see if I can find the capacitors. Just to be sure. So this is um, the original Git repo for this thing. I built this earlier. I can close out those pictures for now. Clear some tabs. Um, well, those Panabai stands would be awesome. Yeah, I think I've got it like in my wish list on Amazon or something. Someday I might get myself on. This is the board I'm making. It's got some general advice on building this. Oh no, this isn't the right one. I'm looking for... I'm not looking for the dual clock module. I'm looking for... Digital I.O. Real-time clock module. This is the same page. Um, bill of materials calls for... This can't be right. One nanofarad. That doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem like the right bill of materials. Okay, so I got the that. I got these are one, two, three, four, five capacitors. Since there's one 100 nanofarad, I don't think that's right. I do have, well, I've got two 100 nanofarads left. Yeah, the problem here is that I got this kit in the summer and then I reorged my entire workshop and parts went all over the place. So it's possible I misplaced some important things. So the bill of materials here on the GitHub site says there's C1 through 5, uh, 0 0.1, microfarad so that's a I'm trying to remember my units is that a 100 nanofarad okay 100 nanofarad well, I have two 100 nanofarads left. I need four. No, I need five. I don't know where the other three went. I 
but I probably have some behind me. I know I got a big bin of capacitors around here somewhere. I believe that's one of the values I've got. Although they're not the same kind of capacitor, which is annoying. Yeah, I've got a bunch of like random electronics kits. Like this claims to have some 100, oh no, those are 100 microfarads. That's, that's what the U is, right? There's nanofarad, picofarad, microfarad, right? Yeah, I can't type with one hand. That's UF, right? Yeah, UF is microfarad. I know I got some more parts around here somewhere. There we go. These might be what I'm looking for. These are labeled mysteriously. So I got this drawer capacitors. Reasonably sure I have 100 microfarads in here. It's a matter of um, figuring out which ones they are. <laughs> Get equipped with mysterious capacitor. Yep. Well, these are like light sensors. I don't want those. Well, I can probably, I can place these at least. We're kind of getting down to the last few boards of this kit, which um, means if I've misplaced components, the last few boards are uh, out of luck. Yeah, after these components, I think um, it's populating the chips, and then the board is done. And I'm at 2 hours and 31 minutes streaming. Hopefully I can get this done in a half hour. This is the part that's like unknown, is I gotta find the parts, because I don't know exactly where they are. I need three more. It also doesn't help that this, like, electronics kit I got is, like, mysteriously labeled in Sharpie. Is that 105 nanofarad? Is that 474? Are these parts numbers? <laughs> yeah, or it kind of says uh, SOL, yeah. As in I am. Um, if I don't find the right parts. I mean, I, I'm not really, but, you know. Yeah, so like, um... This bag either says 104 or it's um, 10 Trident. 
And that's 105. Are those parts numbers? This is educational, I guess. Let's look this up in the browser real quick. Um, Lassiter 104 code. 100,000 picofarads. Well, that might be... Oh, okay. This is a thing that I don't know yet. It's Greek. <laughs> it's Greek to me. Uh, thank you, Quora, which I, has never helped me before. Oh, okay. I don't know. So I know that resistors have a color band system. I don't think I was aware that capacitors have a number code system. So I might have found what I need. Um, capacitor value? Okay, cool. That's educational. Yeah, all right. Uh, third digit multiplier gives you the value of pico picofarads, yada, yada, yada. So, I have one that says, okay. So I think the one that says 104, I'm looking for 100 NF. But this says 104, which I guess is code for 100 NF. I've got this one that says 105. What is 105? 105? Wow! Well, that's one microfarad. Four is nanofarad, so that's a jump in uh, order of magnitude. Three is 10. Okay. So that number is a jump in order of magnitude. Interesting. Confusing, but interesting. Glad I didn't mix up 104 and 105. Or um, 474, which is also in my hand right now. So this would be... So 474 is 470 nanofarad. So I guess I kind of see what they've sharpened onto this thing. But it is interesting that 104 and 105 are a jump in order of magnitude. Now, my meter claims to have a uh, capacitance feature. So, Yeah, and you're welcome for... Oh, and I just rubbed the Sharpie off. <laughs> so now it says... Blah, blah, blah. Um, that sucks. But maybe I can write that back on there again if I have a Sharpie handy. I kind of I can see it says 104. But yeah, I'm, I'm learning about this stuff. And also I'm recording this stream for later so I can see where I screwed up. Like, oh, the board doesn't work. Oh, it's because I used a... Uh, um, 100 microfarad instead of 100 nanofarad capacitor, that sort of thing. Oh, the thing caught on fire. That's because I put 20,000 volts instead of 20. You know, things like that. Hopefully nothing like that. All right. So I got um, these... These are cool little probes. They like got a little thingy that no, you can't see it there. It's got a little thingy that sticks out, and I can clip it to the lead. My meter thinks this is 95 microfarad, or no, 95 nanofarad. So this might be an appropriate part. I'm gonna check this one. It's like in the board now, but maybe I can still check it. Okay. So the one I got on the board says it's 96 nanofarad. Um, this other one. Hundred and, oh yeah, okay. Nine, 97 microfarad. If I wiggle it, the value changes. 97 microfarad. No, nanofarad. Get my units wrong. Nan micro nano pico. 
Nana Ferret. A lot of hundred Nana Ferret on that one. Okay, so I think this is an appropriate part. <laughs> Units are for the week, yeah. Who cares about the intended values? Just use a use a transistor instead of a capacitor. We need units. Let me get those in there better. We gotta get these um, parts into the holes. It also kind of sucks because I think this board was made with not my parts on hand in mind. The footprints are a little different. I can set down my meter leads. Yeah, my capacitors are a little weirdly bow-legged. Hopefully this board works after all this chicanery. <sighs> yeah, parts is parts. I think these are, what are they, ceramic capacitors? It trips me out sometimes because, like, um, these capacitors look like so. You know, little, little beige blobs. And then there's the can uh, capacitors. Like, look like little cans and explode into demon smell smoke. I've had one of those pop the top off and literally shoot flames out. That was in a high voltage CRT monitor, but these don't do that. And the, and the one, the ones that are cans are polarized. Like you can only stick them in in one, one orientation. These apparently are not polarized. Need to read about the difference. Okay, let's solder these in, and hopefully the board works. That's in the way of my next component. help is if I also actually knew the function of these capacitors. I'm, I vaguely know what they're for. I think they're like noise filtering? I don't know. Part of what I wanted want to do in having built this, these cards, is learn what all the parts do after but someone else designed this. Someone else assembled this kit for me. Um, I'm just building it according to the instructions. But after I do that and I see it working, then hopefully I can go like, oh yeah, that's what that's for. And maybe my, my brain will retain that. You know, and then someday, maybe I'll design a board like this myself, who knows. Like I've got some electronics know-how, but there's a bunch of things I don't understand about basic circuits. Like, I know software pretty good.
Make sure I don't stab myself with my tweezers. Very sharp tweezers. I'm gonna stab myself trying to show them off, but yeah, they're basically... And you can do some damage to yourself with those. They're very handy for picking things up. Okay. Well. I think that's it for this, but well, no, okay. I'm gonna populate the chips. Then that's it. So, let's find the appropriate chips. I got a bunch of chips left. I know they're not all for this board. Um, there's a couple of ROM chips, there's some RAM chips, there's some other logic ICs here. Let's sort them out. I don't think I got any of the sockets backwards, so that's good. Because all the sockets have these um, little nubbins on them that tell you which way to put the chip in. Some of these boards have silk screened on them what chip goes where. This board does not appear to, but I think I can read from this what chips to populate. This first one, it's got all kinds of numbers on it. DS-130... Two. DS-1302. I could have to look at the um, bill of materials, too. DS-132, real-time clock with RAM. Huh, interesting. Okay. And the nubbin on this chip goes towards the switches. Which I think goes like... That. And I'm gonna verify all these chips one more time before I like give it any power. And it's four more chips to populate. Uh, this appears to be six two CL. Hmm. None of those seem to match what I'm reading off of there. Ah, maybe it's the lower one. Uh, CD74HCT688E. 74HCT668E. Ah, 74HCT668E comparator. Someday I'll know what these logic chips do, I don't know. So we're looking for... 74... HCT688E. I believe I found it. I think this is. Can you read it? No. Focus, please. CD74HCT688E. And then I think the nubbin goes towards the left of the board. These chips are a real pain to get in there. I'm gonna kind of bend the pins in. I'm sure there's a knack to it that I don't have. 
I'm gonna get the legs in there and um, that. Hand them over. You see, they're not all aligned. It's annoying because the socket requires some pressure. Get the chip to seat. And that pressure is also enough. Bend the legs. You only get so many chances. There's too many bends and the pins break off. They don't have a of this, I don't think. I'll take that out of the helping hands. it in there, I guess. Okay. Okay. I don't think I got any pins bent. Looks pretty good. Again, that's our um, CD74HCT688E, which appears to be a uh, comparator. All right. Next chip. We have three more. Let's do this one. SN74HCT125M. 125M. 125N. This. Logic bus buffer tri state. UD. Okay. HCT125M. We have a 125E, well, yeah, these numbers don't exactly match, but they're probably close enough. Maybe not. Because I got other other ones here. I'm looking for SN seven four HCT one twenty five N. This is another thing. I suppose I should Google and learn is like what is the difference between these parts numbers. And is it an important difference? Yeah, I can't read the parts numbers in this image. Wow, yeah, I can't read the parts numbers in that image at all. Well, amongst all my parts, One, two, five. I have seven, four, eight. What's the difference between? This is probably okay. I have CD. CT one, two, five. E. I mean, the 125 and the 74 and the HCT are there. What's the difference? This doesn't help.
I'm verifying I am, a, I am a human. No, th thank you. <sighs> maybe it's just different vendors? Because the maybe it's the 74HCT125 part. That's important. No, I don't want your newsletter. All right. Well, it's the only part I got left with the uh, 125 specifier. I think we're, we're correct. And just to be sure again, since I've been all over the place, Oh, we're almost going up on three hours. I'm very close to being done, though. This is this chip I'm talking about. One, two, five. I think I know different chips have different versions and different characteristics, but Sometimes it's a distinction without a difference for certain uses. Oh no, I bent a pin. Dang it. that pin back. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. That's so annoying. I'm inserting some of these pins. Ooh, yeah, that one's real bent. Not if I'm careful. Eh, practically good as new. Try again. Okay. I think I got it that time. Pretty good. Doesn't look like any um, bent under. Okay, next chip. Spaghetti pins, yeah. Back to the reference. This one looks like 74HCT32 Mumble Mumble. HCT32M. This one's simpler because you can see that one like immediately. So this is um, the other thing that's encouraging is all these chips are came in, coming from the same bit of foam. So I think they might all be for this board. Again, someone else assembled this kit too for me. I assume they know what they're doing. ways this part should be easier than the soldering but okay okay oh that one seemed to go in without a fuss looks like uh yeah okay one IC left and also it's like I said it's encouraging because it's the last one on this uh piece of felt and that looks like a um, 7.4 7.4 HCT 1.7 foot 
H-C-T-174-E, which I believe is our last one in the scavenger hunt. 74HCT174E. Bill of Materials says. 74HCTs. What? All right. All the numbers match on this one. Now, I guess the first thing I'm trying to do is just end them in a little bit because they they come kind of splayed. I want them to go straight down, which they don't always want to do. Um, okay. I'm not sure I think I got all the, the nubbins, little these things at the end. I think I've got them all facing the correct direction so far. Make sure we do that with this one. We got a couple pins misaligned. Okay. Oh, that didn't sound good. It sounded kind of scrapey. It looks okay though. Come on, focus. Those pins look okay. Those pins look straight and okay. Okay, I don't think I bent any. Hopefully that was just the sound of the pins like scraping against metal. Well, we look socketed. All right. I think that's this board done. Oh um, yeah, and there's a battery. Point cell battery. Okay, so I think that is this board done. So that's two boards this stream at um, almost, uh, well, just a tiny, tiny bit over three hours. Um, I won't know for sure if this board works until I like get it into the house and hook it up and try it out. So here's the, uh, let me get the helping hands out of the way and maybe I can show off what we got built so far. Oh no, there goes another helping hand. Oof. Okay. What do we got? I got a bunch of junk on my thing. This is the computer. And what I built today let me give you a quick little tour of it. You can kind of see that. Yeah. All right. Today I built this board and this board. Last stream, I built this board. And then stream before that, I built this board. So, I built four boards since starting this last summer. And to kind of give like a quick tour of the computer before I end the stream, because I kind of like to review this thing every time. Um, this is a compact flash adapter. It's basically a hard drive. This right here is a RAM ROM module. It's got the like the memory for the computer and the basic operating system. This is a clock board. It, um, it runs clock for the CPU and it runs clock for serial ports. This is the CPU board, got the Z80 processor on it. This is a Wi-Fi board. It was a little ESP8266 right here, connects to my Wi-Fi. You can actually tell that into this, this computer. Um, this is a serial interface. This board talks to that board over the bus. Um, this is the new, so actually, Timely question, 
where does one plug a keyboard in? You can tell into or the, the network, but I just built this board today. Um, there's a VGA interface for a monitor. And then the Pi Pico, you can plug a um, micro USB to a USB A adapter here. And this is where a keyboard could go in. So this that I just built today is, a, is hopefully what lets it hook up to a monitor and keyboard itself. Um, you can also connect to, so these pins right here, you can connect this widget right here. And this lets you connect to it over a serial interface. So this is how I've been using it so far. But this board, if it works, will let me hook up to its own VGA monitor. Um, this board is just blinking lights and buttons. It gives you a little input circuit. And then this one lets it remember what time and date it is. So all together, it's like a retro computer runs CPM, which is like an ancient predecessor to DOS. Some would say DOS ripped off CPM, Bill Gates ripped off CPM. So this is like an ancestor to the PC. It's neat though, because like there's actually a lot of pre-existing software out there that's like, you know, 30 to 40 years old. You can download like the direct ancient archives of and upload it to this CF card and it'll, it'll just run on this thing. Like uh, I got a version of Zork on there that runs. There's an old version of um, the Star Trek game from the 80s that runs on there. WordStar, I think WordStar 4.0 runs on it. Uh, WordStar is the word processor <laughs> that George R.R. R. Martin writes uh, Game of Thrones with. I think he uses a PC version, but this computer can run the word processor that uh, George R.R. R. Martin runs. It does run Xmodem, it runs Kermit. It doesn't run Midnight Commander. Um, but yeah, it's got a 128 meg hard drive, 512k kilobytes of RAM, 500k kilobytes of ROM. It runs at uh, about seven megahertz, not gigahertz. Um, yeah, that's a neat little machine. I'm hopefully gonna, I've got a couple more cards to build. I don't know if I'm gonna be in a hurry to build them or not. I've got um, this board is RAM, but it's only 64K RAM. And this is another ROM board. The, the interesting thing is this came with, these came with the kit, but this board, the single board, replaces and upgrades both of these. So these are actually a downgrade. I might still build them just to have them and to have built them. But like, I bought the kit, it came with these, but along with the kit, I bought the upgrade already. So this is, these are a downgrade technically. But I got the parts for them, so I may still build them. Um, also missing a sound card, but I ordered a sound card. So hopefully like in the next few weeks or months, you can see there's, there's just like two slots left for expansion. One of these is going to be a sound card. I don't know what the last one will be. It's, um, it's this thing called the sound card. I think it's based on the chip from a ZX Spectrum. Yeah, what is this thing called? So yeah, rc2014.co.uk is the home for these kits. Uh, what I just ordered is the Y Emulator sound module. It's a neat board. This, this seems like a neat board because because they've also got boards that use the original chips, but the original chips aren't made anymore. So this board, the chip would go here, but instead he's built um, an emulator. 
But then when this board is fully built, there's some other pictures here. Actually, maybe I'll, I'll uh, pause my demo scene real quick. This is what I think I, can, I think you might be able to hear the sound from this browser. Maybe you can't. I don't know if that's coming through. So this board makes this music. Pretty cool. So hopefully in another um, week or two, I might do another stream where I uh, I put that board, put this board together. And then maybe by that point, I'll have some video capture set up for this board. So maybe I can um, show off playing with it because it does work right now. I've got it booting up. I've got an OA operating system on the, on the card. Um, things run. But that's uh, pretty much it for today, I think. Looks like my network's kind of itching up again. But, um, but yeah. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching me stumble through this stupid thing. I'll probably do more of it. Um, until next time, thanks for coming by and watching. Oops, I gotta hit the right button to like end my stream. Are you ready? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, now, now, now.